Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. In tonight's video, we're going to work with creating a local file repository for Subversion using the internal JDeveloper functionality. Um, let me just show you here. I have a small application. It only consists of a Java file, basically. We're going to practice convert, uh, versioning this. So first, what I need to do is create a local repository. And for this, i um, probably going to check my file system. Just a second, please. OK, got the right name in. And I'm going to name it App1. Just for uh, this example, we'll use the native. And this is, by the way, available in the um, web page here. Uh, using this one by Chris Muir. And this, this one goes over the internal versioning. OK, so um, here you can see that we have app one created. Now I need to create some other uh, directories. Now don't choose new, but choose remote directory. And then down here, we're going to do trunk. And actually, we'll look at how his um, layout is. He's got two suggested layouts here. <clears throat> One where you actually have the root, and then the application, and then branches, tags, and trunk, with production and test in there. And then further down, where you have trunk, app, branches, app. Uh, frankly, I would probably want to have it based on the application. Um, and in fact, I would probably want to have a separate repository for each application. But that's um, up to how you would want to do it. OK, so I'm, I'm going to continue here. We have our trunk. One thing you want to do, and this is kind of a stupid thing, but don't create it on the trunk. Create it on the main one. OK, so I've got the trunk. I'm going to do branches. And, and now I'm going to do tags. And really, just for this demo, that's all we need. So this is where we'll place it first. Now, uh, since we've got that, actually, I'll create a second local repository. And we'll call this one app2, simply because I want to show you something. OK, and I'm not going to bother with the other parts of it. But now. When we version this, oh, and I'm, I'm sorry, let's go over a couple things here. First of all, you can see it down here in the versioning navigator. <clears throat> I actually do not see where to get this. Um, it may automatically just pop up when you click on versioning, um, but I have been able to find out where it actually is hidden in here, and you would think that it would logically go on the view menu, but it doesn't seem to be. The second thing is, is that as we make um, make the directories, it actually writes it here and actually commits it as a revision. OK, let's go to versioning now. And um, we're going to version our application. And um, you can see that we've already created the connection, so it's in here. And you can actually select between which one you're going to choose it in. I'm going to put it in trunk for now. Trunk is considered where you do your main development work. This is the directory of the file. You may want to just check that. And these are the selected filters that are it's going to skip files. You know, obviously, you don't want to have files that are dot class files stored in this because those change all the time. And you only want the files that really matter. And JDeveloper pretty much knows which files are necessary. And um, this just means that um, when we run this, it's automatically going to close this application and then reopen it and do a checkout. So you can watch that as I press Next. And this is just a summary. 
So here you can see that it closed the application and then it reopened it. You can see that this is revision 6 and it's put all of these files in there. Let's go back, reopen this, and we're going to just put in change 1, save it, and now um, Okay, I pause there for a minute because I didn't see the pending changes window, which was open previously. But you can get it on the window, uh, on the versioning window here. Or you can also just right click and do versioning and, whoops, versioning. I guess we'll do it on the project. Versioning and then, sorry, you can see all of the different things that you have available to you. Now you can see that this is the change that we did. Um, it's changed and it's sitting there. Uh, and this is out here, you can see at the very bottom, it says outgoing, and these are candidates, and these are incoming. So if somebody else in your team makes a change to the same application and uh, commits their information, you'll see it here. So we're just doing outcoming, and we're going to commit that. Okay, and committed. Okay, and you always want to put this in there. Okay, and so now if we go over to our con. Uh, our console, you can see that committed seven. Uh, we're going to do another change here. Oops. Change two, save it. Pending changes, just commit it. Change. Okay, and that's gone. <clears throat> now, if you look, you can see that that was revision eight. Now here's my problem, or I'm going to introduce a problem so that you can see I've introduced an error into the application. It doesn't, it doesn't allow us to make it, uh, if I make, make it, it'll fail. Um, but um, let's just pretend that for the heck of it, we can't find it. The reason for this and we we need to go back and, and I haven't really seen any good videos on how to actually go back to a previous revision well it's not that hard so what you do is you go up to versioning and you do checkout now you want to make sure that you get the right trunk uh, or, or the right area because um, you can be in tag or trunk or uh, if you do root you'll get everything and then we're going to use revision. I'm going to just choose six, which is maybe a little bit too far back. But uh, let's close that out. <clears throat> and there you can see we went back. Now, of course, if you're committing to the project team, there are considerations here. This is fine if you're working on your own and you mess up and you need to go back to a ver previous version. But if you're committing to the main trunk of the development environment and other people are pulling in newer the versions that you've done, then everybody is going to have to revert back. So you want to be very careful about just willy-nilly reverting using or going back to a previous version. So again, it's very simple. Check out and then use the revision. And um, that's why you kind of need to keep track of the revisions because um, this helps you identify where you might want to be and also putting in a more coherent message than just change will also help you identify where you might have messed up and where you might want to go back to. So that is um, basically how to use sub uh, Subversion. There is one other thing that you might want to do um, is with versioning, let me here go to, where is it? Oh, update working copy. This is where you pull in changes that might have been done by other users. And that's helpful to know. But that's also in the, the other information that I provided earlier. So read those and you'll have a really good understanding of that. There's a lot of information here. And it does create a, a lot of dependencies that um, you have to be careful about. The other thing I'd like to show you is, is that it does create some other file system 
that you um, need to be aware of. And also within the application files, you'll see .svn directory. Um, and um, if you ever want to delete these out, um, you know, and, and go back to maybe a zip version, if for whatever reason here I have a zip version of my application. Um, I found a bug in the J developer, which I was writing about. So um, uh, that's possible too. Um, the other thing that you can do is um, go into your system directory and just look up subversion. I have it already pre-written here. And uh, you can just, with JDeveloper closed, you can delete this file out and it'll get rid of any information that it has about the subversion directories and then start over if you have to. So that's something to consider also. Uh, I hope this is helpful. Have a good evening.